goes off and writes the script. And then Brad Wright, as the head writer, would oversee the rewrite. Um, but yeah, so an idea like that ended up going to a different character, which is kind of sad. I would have loved to see Hathor do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, I said to Brad recently when I saw him, I said, you know, Brad, I was in Chicago and, and a fan asked me about, you know, they knew I contributed to one of the stories and, and asked me, like, did it bug you that you didn't get opportunities to write more or to direct some of the episodes? And, and Brad said, and what did you say? <laughs> and I said, well, I said the truth, and that is when a show is so successful and is so well-loved and endures for so long, it's really hard to look back and criticize any decisions that were made because clearly it was on the right track all along. Now, it doesn't mean that I wouldn't have loved to see Nearty come back 10 times or 22 times like Ball, but at the same time, it's, it's worked, right? It's worked. And, and here we are today still participating and, and you know, so I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, that suggests that there was some quality involved. <laughs> and also, I mean, oh, hello. 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 Quality over quantity, the the room, the ideas, and then that. <laughs> It happens all kinds of different ways. I mean, for me, in fact, I stopped doing cons for 10 years. So a month ago was the first time in 10 years I'd, I'd done a con. So we're very lucky to have you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. So there's a whole bunch of different ways. I remember when I first started doing them, I, I got an email that from, I don't even know how the person had managed to reach me, but it was um, Brian Cooney in the UK. And so I went to Blackpool, England. And so for me, it was oh, all new. Thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, it was pretty amazing, it was pretty amazing. If there was, it was, it was, I don't know, I guess cons had already been going on for some time. I didn't, I didn't really know until I, I did my first one. But there was a level of comfort knowing who else was going, what the destination was, and the kind of, the circumstances. And it was just a lovely opportunity to go represent your craft see some people that you know and, and admire and go to a place that you're really interested in seeing. And then I went to Canberra and uh, yeah, so did a couple at that time. And then unfortunately I started having to say no because I was having my baby. So I did, so, but then it became like, wow, what an opportunity to go to Germany and then see France, at, you know, in one trip, get to meet fans in all those different countries. And the time, if the timing is right, it's great. And now I have a manager, and so she kind of, uh, you know, when I said I, I was ready to accept invitations again, um, she knew Gary Chalk, actually. I was talking to Gary, and I said, yeah, I'm thinking about cons again. He said, I'm going to have Sherry call you, and that's, that's his manager. And she right away said, oh, we're going to get you into Chicago, because it was the last Stargate-specific convention. But now, of course, it was so well-received, they're going to do another. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, the first one I was invited to was in Australia, and it was really funny because they got hold, I was performing in a, um, a sort of cabaret venue that happened to be in a hotel, and the general manager of the hotel found me one day and he said, oh, Miss Brown, I'm very sorry, but we have um, an email for you, and unfortunately we had to read it because it came to the hotel's email, and I went, oh, thank you. And there was this email from this woman saying, we want you to come to Australia and appear, and you were Hathor, and I thought it was a joke. <laughs> so I didn't respond. I thought, oh, well, that's whatever that is. And about two weeks went by, and then I got another email through the hotel going, I'm not sure if you were given this. I hope that they've passed it on, but we very, very much would like you to have to the judges coming. All kinds of people are coming. So I wrote back, and I said, look, this is my email address. And what exactly is this? Anyway, and long story short, I obviously said yes. And then I didn't, couldn't really find any information about it. 
and kind of got on the plane in blind faith. And I just remember about halfway there going, what if they're psychopaths? <laughs> I mean, what happens if they're going to be kidnapped by the Moonies or something? <laughs> And then, of course, you, it's a very long flight um, to be down here, as we all know, because it's a beautiful place, but you're all on the other side of the world. <laughs> and uh, when I landed, I had you no know, makeup on, and oh my God, I was still traveling on a South African passport, so you could just see the custom guys being like, bruh, 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 mayday, mayday, we got a, we got a, we got a hot one. <laughs> and they were like, excuse me, ma'am, how long are you staying here for? Do you unpack all your luggage, please? And you can travel on your own, are you baking? Oh my God, it was horrendous. So finally, I'm about to go through, and I just remember thinking, I better put a bit of lippy on, just in case there's somebody there. And I came from like 200 people with banners going, Welcome Hathor! And I was like, Oh. My. God. And literally stood there while people were doing, Oh my God, the waltzing Matilda, and I had koalas being thrown at me. Not live ones, stuffed ones. <laughs> Teddy bear ones. It was absolutely unbelievable. It was so unbelievable that we had our own bodyguards on each floor of the hotel. And I remember phoning my husband, I was like, I've got a man standing outside my door all night. I mean, one night I went to the guy, I was like, look, you really can go. You don't know, he's like, no, ma'am, I'm here to protect you. So, okay. <laughs> all right, then. <laughs> but that's Australia. New Zealand's not like that. <laughs> I remember when I went to uh, Canberra, uh, my husband and I had just started seeing each other, and he, well, we'd been together for a few months anyway. So he came with me, and he actually was my security just walking through the hotel because, you know, yeah. it's like there was a lot of excitement, and people are getting on the lift with you, and they're going to come right up to your room and so on. In fact, though, I mean, often they, they will, um, you know, have the venue separate from the hotel where the guests are staying. But sometimes you're in the same place. And uh, in, in Melbourne, actually, no, in Chicago, um, I was staying in the same venue. And I came up to my room one day, and there were two fans wearing full-on SG-1 gear and guns standing right at my door. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my God, uh, they know where I'm staying. No, they were just standing and chatting. And that just hap they just happened to be stopped in front of my door. So I said, excuse me. <laughs> and Jen Spence, you guys know Jen Spence? She was coming up to help me record an audition. And so she came in and she was trying to be discreet about which room was mine, so she was sort of pretending she wasn't coming into that room because they were still staying there and talking. And I could hear her talking to them eventually. And so I opened my door and I brought her in. She said, oh, I was trying to be discreet about which was your room. And they still stayed outside and chatting away. And eventually we were about to record the audition. So I opened the door and I said, I'm sorry, I, I'm just going to do a little recording. Is it okay if you move down the hallway? And I thought, oh, I, I probably hurt their feelings, you know. They were amazing. Not only did they go and not make noise, I never heard another sound on the floor of my hotel for the rest of the convention. <laughs> so they had gone, like, every room that they were fans, like, Shh, you know, energy, Jen Spence, continue on, and, and they were there working. It was really amazing. But to answer your question, agents, uh, we all have sort of booking agents and people who help us um, do these. But one of the things I've noticed, and my booking agent is on Twitter, is when people tweet saying we want somebody at a convention, they really pay attention to that. So if you guys would like us to come back, <laughs> y'all know what to do. <laughs> And also, please follow us on Twitter. If, if you're not followers yet, I'm trying to get up to speed. I'm, I'm slow, but I'm, try, I'm getting there. And I'm at J Samuda, so it's capital J, capital S. And Sue Ann, you're at Sue Ann Braun, aren't you? So very, very straightforward. Yeah, and in fact, even my convention manager has said the, the fastest way to get a guest at a convention is for the fans to request that guest. So it's really, you guys have a lot of influence a lot of influence. Have you, have you had any friends that freaked you out? Any situations of <laughs> over-enthusiastic fans? I, I had a fan send me a clock from like Europe. <laughs> and, and it came to my agency, and, and I'd received a couple of letters, but then eventually this you know, this box is there at the agency and... <laughs> yeah, it's ticking. Yeah, right? And she's like, come on in. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. 
I open it up and I pull it out. It's a clock and it was me. <laughs> My days are numbered. <laughs> and she just and I said, this is the third thing I've received. And she and she just said, she takes it, she puts it away, she says, forget about it. It's handled. I was like, okay. <laughs> and I, that was just it. So I don't know if more things came to the agency, but it was just, that was the end of, uh, the end of that, yeah. Oh, and then, oh, the only other weird thing was, well, I, can I say weird? I mean, it was such a tribute. I honestly was so impressed. I will never forget it as long as I live. When a, a fan, to, a, a married couple, came to my signing table in Chicago and, and presented what I thought was going to be a spectacular Stargate poster because it was massive, it was five feet wide, it was as wide as my table, and our table six feet, and they could barely unroll it, it was heavy and big, and it was my face. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I saw it, I was like, where, where, where do I find, you know, yeah, I was surprised. <laughs> I've had uh, somebody email me and ask me my, um, it started off very simply with, you know, she wanted to wear the costume, and she really liked the costume, and lots of questions about the costume and I made the stupid mistake of saying because she said are you really Sue Ann Brown who played Hathor? I said yes I am and she said well can you prove it and I was like well not really but uh, ask me anything big mistake um, <laughs> like right down to the hand device to the size of the shoes to the material to the and it the question got progressively more, more frenetic and more impersonal uh, not impersonal personal and eventually she said, um, I need to know your cup measurements. <laughs> and I wrote back and I said, look, I'm really not comfortable discussing that. And I'm not really sure why you need to know. And she said, oh, well, I'm having cap. Because <laughs> you alluded to it on Monday when we had the four of you here. What's the real gossip of that? And he goes, really? Ah, the puff and ruffle. <laughs> Do you guys know about the puff and ruffle? No. No? Okay, next time you all see Amanda tapping, you ask her about the puff and ruffle. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's just, yeah? Yes. What is it? Uh, it's talking about when the girls come on to the set, they all... That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, suddenly you see all the guys and they're like, hey, man, yeah, what's up, dude, man, fucking this one. Hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> There's a whole change in demeanor, attitude. There's a lot of preening and, oh, go for chests, and everybody is kind of smooth, and they're all competing. <laughs> Um, but no, actually, I don't have any goss. They were fantastic, and they were so lovely. And in fact, um, Chris Judge, I arrived for... I had a week shooting, or 10 days shooting, and I arrived on the Friday uh, in Vancouver uh, for costume fittings and, and things like that, and then had the weekend free, and was only starting work on Monday, and didn't know anyone. And as I was leaving the set, he kind of said, hey, man, I'm having a party at my house on Saturday night. You want to come? And I said, yeah, okay. And it was amazing. He had this huge, like, very rock and roll party with a band, and um, some of the producers and I kind of all went, and that was fantastic. So I don't really have any goss on him. No, no I, I had a kind of funny thing happen once in North Vancouver, which is, you know, it's fairly central to, to everywhere in Vancouver, but it's uh, just not where I would expect to see somebody in the industry in a grocery store. And Chris Judge snuck up on me in a grocery store <laughs> and picked me up <laughs> from behind. <laughs> so it was kind of like, oh, I'm lifting in the air. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> and then I, I just had to look down. You recognize his arms. Like, no one has guns like that. So <laughs> it was Chris Judge. Well, thanks, everyone. This has been fun as usual. Thank you so much. Stick around, we're going to be joined by Cliff James and uh, Cliff James, Cliff Simon and Peter Williams.